Hey y'all, it's Kaya. I wasn't planning on doing a tutorial for this, but as I started doing it, I felt like it might be cool. So I'm going to record it and we're going to, I'm going to talk you through the first three steps I did to get to this point. I'm sorry that I didn't record it. It just like kind of hit me mid like, oh, okay, that might be kind of fun. Maybe they'll want to see it. Okay, so what I did is I just have four ceramic tile from Lowe's right these are the cheap eight cents each four by four tiles i think the tile company is called delight like d-a-l-i-t-e um but anyway these are just the most basic tiles i'm sorry i said lows i got it in my home depot these are just the most basic tiles that they have now side note i have seen these same tiles at Lowe's, but i think they cost like 11 cents but anyway whatever cheap four by four tiles they have or whatever kind of ceramic tiles that you want to use. So I got my two part resin epoxy that I mixed up. And these are the bottles. I just mix equal parts of that on the scale. Um, you know, the amount you need to mix up depends on what kind of size projects that you're doing. So, you know, whatever you're comfortable with. And I just base them in white this is my tiles were white. I mean, you could do clear since the tiles are already white, but that's just what I had up. It's a leftover epoxy from a previous project. So anyway, I've got my tile resting on other little small tiles so that they can drip off. As you can see um, right here, the epoxy is already starting to drip, so that's what we want. And I'm just using this leftover epoxy to make some coaster sets. Now you can do these one at a time if you prefer. I have these all lined up in a set of four because I'm going to kind of make a uh, centerpiece similar to some of the molds that you see that are like six pieces and you can mix and match. I just choose to do that with square tiles because who's got 40 and $50 for molds? Not me. Okay. So I just spread my epoxy from edge to edge. I'm going to place them all together. And now I'm going to layer in some black and gold. Because I've reserved just a little bit of white for my detailing. I've reserved just a little bit of white. So I had this black. It is so thick. Because it was actually like a tan color that I mixed up for my Fix It Jesus Friday. And this is leftover. So it's super, super thick. Yours will not be this thick when you mix it up. So don't fret. Don't freak out. So I'm just going to kind of string it across my tile because like as you can see like it's already stringy. Sometimes if you're working on a project it's easier to work with the thickened epoxy. Like if you're doing the snowman cocoa cup. I don't know this may be kind of crazy. We'll have to see. We're just experimenting today. I always try to use up all the epoxy that I can so you know I don't know how this leftover project is gonna work oh crazy okay so I got a little bit too much here I'm just gonna scrape some of it off make that line less thick it looks kind of spider webby so I'm just gonna do the same thing on these over here Bring some of that black on and then we're gonna blow them out with a heat gun oh gosh that's gonna be too much oh this is craziness I waited about four minutes too long five minutes too long I mean my epoxy only has about maybe a 30 minute work time this is Definitely, I would say pass if work time. Not sure how this will blow, but we're going to give it a try. I've got fresh white epoxy underneath it to help it kind of move a little bit. Okay. Those look crazy, but fun. Alright. Let's 
break that off you know what we're just gonna switch to a different kind of stick and by the way I'm gonna leave my cup just dirty just like this take my cup my stick place it flat in my cup against the corner with all the epoxy on it that way when I'm ready to clean up in the morning I'll just pull my stick and that epoxy should come out in one big piece I will do the same thing for all my cups um, I have a cleanup video for my tools and workstation station posted so check that out if you need tips about easy resin cleanup because this stuff is a mess like I'm telling you I epoxy in the same thing every time because I have epoxy on all of my clothes all of them all of them okay so now I have some gold that I mix up and I'm just doing that same thing and like you can tell that some of these softer lines some of these smaller thinner lines have already started to mix in with the epoxy epoxy is self-leveling so even though it's past its prime it's already starting to cure and spread which is exactly what we want so you know I'm just going in all crazy with this gold since the black is just like so crazy I'm just striping it quickly in as well and then we're gonna try and marble these out the thing I like about marble is it doesn't matter I mean obviously you don't want to like do too much because you're gonna have a mess on your hands but the, it doesn't have to be real specific it's not like all your lines have to go this way to get this effect you know you can just kind of be freehand about it I've just got a little stripe somewhere where I have had somehow I've missed like just two lines of epoxy I can see there's no epoxy there I can see all the way down to the tile I'm just gonna go back in with that white okay now I'm gonna take my heat gun before we heat it let me show you a close-up okay so here is a close-up and this is when I say that some of the lines are already softening this is what I'm talking about right here some of the lines have already started to mix in with the epoxy but some of them are still really thick see that one's still real thick so when we apply heat it'll soften all those lines I'm gonna do high for the first probably I would say 20 seconds since some of my black is already set and then go in and lower the heat you want to keep it two to three inches away from your tile work not on it like you would with your hair dryer you want at least I would say a fifth space between the end of your nozzle and your tile about that much space and you're just going to be constantly going back and forth, back and forth. Now, if there's a particular a spot that's particularly stubborn, you can get a little closer. But epoxy is flammable. So it will burn and it will flame. And if you're using alcohol inks instead of mica powder, that is especially flammable. So you need to be careful. This is a dangerous game. So anyway, high, 30 seconds, then we're going down to low. So I'm just working back and forth, back and forth. You see the gold and the white, it's spreading already, but that black is curing, it's stubborn. So the heat helps your epoxy move, but it also pops all those air bubbles. And that's what I can see first. On the black, all those air bubbles are popping. Those are air bubbles that are trapped in that epoxy. That's why it's always important to finish your product with heat. Otherwise, you'll see micro air bubbles that as the heat dries will come to the surface. So I'm just doing sweeping motions left to right. No one place too long. 
so it's uh, spread out the way that I want. And you can always go back in and add more gold or more white. Like I want my black to be set and if that's taking a little more heat since it's already cured. But if I felt like, oh, okay, I drew out too many, too much of the gold or too much of the white, you can go back and add that in. A little bit of heat just makes all the difference. So now I'm just going to take my spatula. There's a few spots where like the epoxy has just, um, the best term for it is fish-eyed. The heat has left spaces where the epoxy has moved and has not covered. So I'm just going back and filling in those few edges. And I'm going to take some of that white and go right in those spaces. Just right along the corner. And I mean, the tile is white, so once you add the other detailing, it'll blend right in. And since my coasters are all squished together, um, you know, my edges aren't going to be done. Normally I would, oh gosh, that's a long epoxy string. I'm getting epoxy all over me. Um, normally I would do the coasters one at a time, but since I wanted these all to be the same and sell them as a set, it's easier just to do them all at once. I may not be able to get the same effect on each coaster had I done them separately. So I will go back and finish those edges with a gold marker pen. You can also use gold acrylic paint. You can use, um, let's see, what else do I see people? Gold, gold leaf, silver leaf, you know, whatever you prefer to do. So I'm just going to go in and I'm not going to blow these out. Like that's why I'm doing like super pencil thin lines. I'm just going to kind of let those stay. Kind of like gold veining. So I'm not going crazy with them. I'm scraping my brush off. See, my palette off. So that I just get a little line of epoxy. And I'm just barely dragging my paint knife, my paint palette through the tip. The, the tip of this paint palette through the epoxy. Not enough to disturb the epoxy that's underneath, just enough to guide that line through the epoxy where I want it to go. So scrape, dip, scrape, and then place my line. Just to give it another element. To help it look more like real marble you know real marble has veins and fault lines and things like that okay so now that I've got my detailing done I'm gonna let these coasters sit on their little drip blocks for five to six hours and then when they're dry I will put some backing on it and then package them for coasters now I do a couple of different things for coaster backing so there are different options you can get a big roll of cork from Michaels hold on while I look to see if I can find my cork We're in the craft trap house and stuff is still in boxes. Uh, okay, I don't see the cork, but it comes in like a big roll and you would just slice it in the little four by four. You would flip the coaster. This one here. See, this is a coaster, what the back looks like. It's got drips because I didn't tape it off. So I would take my heat gun and I'd heat these up and I would peel them off and then I would put uh, Gorilla Glue 
Um, the Gorilla Glue that I use is the Gorilla Glue Clear Epoxy. It sets in five minutes. It's just easy. You plunge it. There's two parts, so you just push the plunger, distribute it, mix up the two pieces, glue, put your glue on the back, put your cork on. I put a book on top, and I let them set for about an hour. When I come back, they're good. You also have the option of finishing it with felt. Now, I have a Cricut machine. My Cricut will cut felt so I can get 4x4, four four, perfect 4x4 four four, um, felt squares cut pretty quick. Oops, I dropped something. I didn't break it, though. Okay, um, so sometimes that is an option that I use. I've also seen these at Dollar Tree. And they are just, uh, they're called tool bench hardware. They're felt pads. They come in a big pack. I would say I've seen these at Dollar Tree recently here in the last month or so. But if you shop at Dollar Tree a lot, you know that not everybody has the same thing. So these come with little ones and big ones. And they just have like the simple paper backing. If you use these, I would advise you to do it with the uh, Gorilla Glue. And you would just peel the backing, put the adhesive down, stick your bumper pad on. If you use these big ones, you might be able to get away with just using two, but it's up to you. Stick your bumper pad on in there. They won't scratch your table surface. Boom. Done. So you can use two of those big ones. It's got a bunch of little ones. You can put one in each corner. You know, however you want to do it. And as you can see on this one, this is what I was talking about with the epoxy coming down the edges. This one had enough epoxy to go all the way down the edges. So I just took my finger and ran it all along the edges so the edges were finished. You could edge this with gold, gold pin, gold silver leaf, whatever. So, you know, this is what a finished one would look like or could be a version of one. I would just clean all this up. You wouldn't see this. Now, you could also tape the back of your coasters with just pa packing tape, masking tape, or anything before you set your epoxy. And then you would just pull the tape and you were done. I just didn't do that because this was a leftover one that I had you know, like I said, I try to use up all the epoxy that I have for projects. Um, so I keep a stash of those. Like, you can get a box of eight of these tiles for, I think I got a hundred of them. For like eight bucks or something. And so I just have a big box of them. See? Just simple four tile. Four by four square. And you could do this on any shape. They have really cute quarter foils, you can do the quarter foil, you can do the diamonds, you can do the rectangle, whatever shape you want, it's all the same, as long as they're ceramic tiles. Alright, so that's my tutorial for today. I wasn't planning on doing another tutorial, but you got a freebie. I think these look fabulous. They're going to go with me to the vendor show. If you're in the Indianapolis area, please stop in and come see me, because I would love to see you, and you can purchase the things you see here. So anyway, I hope you have a great day and we will see you next time.